G'day guys and welcome to Tokyo! Radio guys, so we are here in our first landmark and sort of activity here. We are in Sen Shoji Temple, and it is certainly not quiet here. There is a lot of other tourists here. This temple was actually built in 645, which makes it over 1500 years old. Obviously, it's had some restorations since then for it to stand to its glory today, but this is actually a Buddhist temple here in Tokyo, Japan. So come along with me, let's go check it out and see what it's all about. So as you can see, as busy as this place is, it's actually really nice and calm. I just feel really calm. Like normally when I'm making these videos, I'm like thinking ahead and how to make the best video, but when you're here, you just get this whole sense of peace. And I don't know if it's because people are coming here to pray and there's smoke and people are doing their wishes and their money donations and praying to Buddha. I'm not too sure, but when you come here, I do hope you feel the same peace I'm feeling now because it is just lovely here and as you can see this garden here behind me adds to that it is very lovely here So that's another thing as well, you'll see people come in traditional Japanese clothes to take photos, to pray and do it very traditionally. It's actually really nice. You don't normally see women in Japan wearing their traditional dress, but you see a lot of them here um, at the temples doing that. So yeah, it's really cool to see. This house just here is a perfect example of why everything in Japan is so picturesque. Everything is so photogenic. And this old house, like look at it, it's like so traditional and so old. Just next to the temple too, like, it j Japan just blows my mind with the amount of things you can see here. One thing that I've noticed like walking around Japan is the roads are so like quiet. Like I'm just walking in the middle of the road right now because people just don't use cars. Most of the public transport is so accessible here, especially in Tokyo, that people just don't bother driving. They either ride their bikes or just take the metro or the bus and that's the best way. So really walking around, it's quite a breeze. There's no honking, there's no worrying about someone running into you because you know you'll be sweet. Another thing in terms of infrastructure here is it is very um, wheelchair friendly. All the places are easy to get to wheelchair. Like if you're in a wheelchair, all the stores, everything's got ramps, all the roads like come up nicely when you're walking across. It's like literally, if you had a disability and you were in a wheelchair, Japan is a place that you would want to live 
for sure because it is so easy. And then also another thing I've noticed is for blind people, they have braille on literally everything, on lifts, on um, the um, stop, stop signs, on the um, cans that you buy at 7-Eleven, on the food, on so many things. You just see braille everywhere. So it's really good for blind people because they run their hands over it and they can read it. stumbled across these hands here like carved in the pavement I have no idea what it means so if you're Japanese can you let me know in the comments because this seems like a really cool I don't know like feature or whatever it is but yeah that's interesting front of the Tokyo Skytree Broadcasting Tower. Fun fact, this is actually the largest broadcasting tower in the whole world and we're about to go up it and get 360 degree views of the city. So come along with me, let's see how much it costs and check it out. So it's pretty funny, whenever I'm filming like big towers or something like that, you don't really need to use Google Maps. Once you're in the city centre, you just walk towards it because it stands out like nothing else. So yeah, let's go. like Santa and his elves, <laughs> meaning workers are setting up a, uh, a display for Christmas, so how cool is that? So we just bought the tickets then online to the tower and it was 2100 uh, yen or 21 Australian dollars or about $14 US, so to be able to go all the way up to the top, it's not a bad price if you ask me. sky deck felt like we we're only in the lift for like 10 seconds boom we were up here straight away it's 350 meters as you can see behind me we can see the view of all of Tokyo so let's check this out so because the observation deck here is so big the people all around here is actually really spread out. So even though there's a lot of people up here and the line here was actually really long, it doesn't really feel too crowded. Even though there is a lot of people up here, it's still not that bad. So we've actually came up here at the best time. Not only did we catch the sun setting, but also all of the lights over Tokyo. So it's a win-win getting the best of both worlds. So I'm so glad I can take you guys up here with me and just seeing this amazing view of Tokyo. It's honestly blown my mind how big this city is. It's so clean, it's so well designed. The architecture is amazing. So well thought out and so, so cool. So to utilize space as well, I've noticed this a lot when in Japan is they have sport fields on the roof. And just here, if you can see below us, that is a soccer game going on right now. Or maybe, yeah, no it is. A soccer game, a futsal game going on right now on the top of a roof of a building that looks to be possibly a shopping mall. So they're just utilizing space. So, so clever, so innovative. So outside the souvenir shop, you can actually buy a postcard and they will send it for you. So right here behind me is actually a post box, which is really cool. So 
How's that? You can post something from all the way up this high to your family and they have a different range of postcards as well. So yeah, I found that really fascinating and a nice service. Radio. so we've now made it to the final floor of the uh, observation deck. Now we're just in the queue to get back down. So we're just walking to the metro to go and find some dinner and we've just walked through this lovely little mall that's all Christmas themed. It's really nice. restaurant um, near our hotel and I have just ordered um, it's sort of like a mystery soup but when we translated it it said Cantonese um, soup so I was really feeling like something with vegetables and noodles so I've ordered this but one thing I wanted to show you guys is whenever you go into a restaurant in Japan they give you one of these warm towels and you can like clean your hands and like your face well i think you can clean your face i don't know and then yeah so it's really nice it's such a nice treat and wherever you go you normally get a free water as well which is nice so yeah we've just ordered this and they also gave us a translated english menu which is really lovely of them so the translated english menu matched up with numbers in here so it's sort of easy for us to translate it so yeah let's um see what we get Radio, so my Cantonese noodle bowl just came out and it is huge. Look at the size of that bowl. It is as big as my head. For 700 yen, it is so worth it. That's only $7 Australian or about $4.50 US. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna try the broth first. Yep, this is gonna be good. <laughs> so. Let's get some noodles, some beef, and some vegetables. I might even get my chopstick. Chopsticks, actually. So, okay. It tastes so home cooked. So wholesome, so hearty. I even have a little bit of a tickle in my throat, so this is gonna fix me right up. So yeah, I'm gonna dig into this, and then call it a day. Thank you so much for coming along with me today, experiencing my first impressions of Tokyo being right beside me. And as always guys, keep it real. Cheers.